For as human population expands, previously hidden threats are crawling out of the depths. Ebola, SARS are all viral diseases from nature. In 1976, there was an Ebola outbreak in Africa. The mortality rate is 50%. Until June 19, 2020, the latest Ebola outbreak has killed 12 people. In 2002, SARS broke out in Guangdong, China. It spreads into 32 countries. In 2019, COVID-19 has broke out. The virus spreads around the world within three months. By June 20, 2020, the total number of confirmed cases is 3,748,992. Four hundred sixty thousand nine hundred and twenty-two persons died. There might be many more virus diseases waiting to emerge, but how you fight a microscopic enemy? You fight by knowing more about them and create weapons to attack them. This video is a good tool for you to deeply understand the virus diseases by taking COVID-19 as an example. The following video will cover the following points. Normally, as we breathe, SARS-CoV-2 in the air will enter our body. Some viruses will be trapped in the mucosa of mouth and nose. The other viruses will enter in our lungs through airway. Alveoli in the lung have only a thin layer of tissue cells to facilitate gas exchange with red blood cells. SARS-CoV-2 takes this advantage to enter our cells. SARS-CoV-2 has a special protein named spike glycoprotein on its envelope. Using this spike protein, SARS-CoV-2 interacts with ACE2 and inter-ACE2 expressing cells, such as mucous membrane cells, to replicate and spread. This virus uses the receptor binding domain RBD of the surface spike protein to interact with ACE2. A previous study published in Science found that the virus spike protein has two receptor binding domains or RBDs facing downward and another facing upward. This allowed the virus to bind with and invade human cells by interacting with ACE2. The RBD of SARS-CoV-2 is recognized by the extracellular peptidase domain PD, of ACE2 mainly through polar residues. Each PD accommodates one RBD. The overall interface is mediated mainly through polar interactions. The contact can be divided to three clusters. The two ends of the bridge attached to the amino end and carboxyl C termini of the alpha-1 helix as well as small areas on the alpha-2 helix and loop 324. The middle segment of alpha-1 reinforces the interaction by engaging two polar residues. For illustration simplicity, we will refer to the N and C termini of the alpha-1 helix as right and left. On the left, Q498, T500, and N501 of RBD form a network of hydrogen bonds with Y41, Q42, K353, and R357 from ACE2. In the middle of the bridge, K470 and Y453 of RBD interact with D30 and H34 of ACE2, respectively. On the right, Q474 of RBD is hydrogen bonded to Q24 of ACE2, while F486 of RBD interacts with M82 of ACE2. The virus uses the spike proteins to penetrate to the cell. Then the virus dissolves its own protein shell and releases its RNA payload inside. The viral's RNA takes over the whole cell endoplasmic reticulum to replicate itself to manufacture the protein parts to make new viruses. 
the hijacked cells' Golgi bodies then packed viral RNA and proteins in a viral protein shell. This leads to the creation of new viruses that leave the injected cell via the membrane. The whole cell finally dies since all energy is used to maintain the virus replication. In the beginning, the amount of SARS-CoV-2 is at low level and the infected person may not show symptoms. However, if our immune system cannot eliminate these viruses, they will replicate and produce huge amount of new viruses, which may destroy our lung cells and cause breathing difficulties. Another pathogenic factor is cytokine storm. After the virus infects the body, the body produces too many cytokines, causing an overreaction. Cytokine storm is actually a turn signal. The goal is to make the immune system instantaneous response with suicide attacks and kill the virus. Cytokine storm also causes the body tissue and cell damage by increasing blood vessel permeability blood cells and plasma pass through blood vessels and enter alveoli, causing heart breathing. Cytokine storm also trigger a massive release of nitric oxide, which further dilutes the blood and damages the blood vessels. Damage caused by viruses and cytokine storm function together to bring blood pressure down to dangerous levels, leading to hypoxia hypotension, multi-organ dysfunction, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. As COVID-19 is highly contagious and also leads to many severe syndromes, the development of a vaccine to protect against COVID-19 is urgently demanded. According to World Health Organization, there are more than 100 candidate vaccines in development worldwide. Among them, at least eight have started or will soon start clinical trials. The vaccine candidates in development can be generally concluded into five kinds. An activated vaccine, live attenuated vaccine, recombinant protein vaccine, nucleic acid vaccine, and recombinant vector vaccine. Next, we are going to introduce two promising vaccine candidates. They have shown desirable results in either preclinical or stage 1 clinical experiment. One promising vaccine candidate fall in the category of inactivated vaccine. Inactivated vaccines use a kill inactivated version of the germ that causes a disease. Viruses are usually killed by heating or soaking in chemical solutions. This kind of vaccine causes immune response but not infection. This inactivated vaccine candidate is developed by Chinese scientists Gao Tiang and other researchers. The result of their preclinical experiment has published on the journal Science, which is the first published preclinical data worldwide. Viruses are replicated successfully in a culture of varicels using the cell factory system with excellent genetic stability and inactivated by beta propylactone. The S spike, receptor binding domain, in specific antibodies, developed quickly in the serum of vaccinated mice, evaluated by enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays, ELISA technology. Similar results are also shown in the serum of the vaccinated rats. Neutralizing assays demonstrate that this vaccine is capable of eliciting antibodies that possibly exhibit potent neutralization activities against SARS-CoV-2 strains circulating worldwide. They also evaluated the immunogenicity and protective efficacy of this vaccine in non-human primates. After inoculation of SARS-CoV-2 strain into the animal lung, all vaccinated primates was largely protected by the vaccine. The safety of the vaccine is also evaluated. Neither fever nor weight loss was observed in any macaque. 
biochemical analysis showed no notable changes in vaccinated groups when compared to the negative control group. Another successful example in China is the adenovirus vaccine. Recombinant vector vaccines implant part of the gene of a harmful virus A into a weak virus B, for example, adenovirus, and form a virus C. This virus looks like virus A but is as weak as virus B. The adenovirus vaccine was developed by a team led by Chen Wei under Academy of Military Medical Sciences, China. It's the first SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidate finishing phase 1 human trial in the world. Scientists screened 195 individuals for eligibility. 51% of them are males and 49% of them are females. The adverse commonly reported reactions were pain, fever, headache, muscle pain, and fatigue. Most adverse reactions that were reported in all doses groups are mild or moderate in severity. No severe adverse event was noted within 28 days post-vaccination. ELISA antibodies and neutralizing antibodies increased significantly at day 14 and T-cell response at day 14 post-vaccination. In conclusion, results show that this adenovirus vaccine is tolerable and immunogenic in healthy adults. There is a potential for this vaccine to control the outbreak of COVID-19 and the ongoing phase 2 trial will provide more information for it. In general, there are three stages for the spread of virus from reservoir host to intermediate host and to the final definitive host. A natural reservoir host harbors the pathogen but shows no ill effects and serves as a source of infection. Reservoir hosts do not get the disease carried by the pathogen. If a reservoir host is discovered and managed properly, future outbreak of diseases could be prevented. Then we are going to talk about the intermediate host. Intermediate host is the bridge for viruses to enter human bodies. If a virus originally could not infect people and want to infect people later on, they need to go through genetic mutations to enter into human body. The intermediate host gave them the opportunity to do so. Viruses such as SARS-CoV-2 will develop spike proteins that can closely bind to human cell receptors. For every outbreak of diseases, it is important for people to identify the reservoir host and intermediate host in order to better control the spreading of diseases. The paper is written by Chinese scientist Shi Zheng Li, analyzes the natural reservoir host and is published on the journal Science on January 20, 2020. Full-length genome sequences were obtained from five patients at an early stage of the outbreak. The sequences were almost identical and share 79.6 sequence identity to SARS-CoV-2, suggesting that the two viruses belong to the same species. Simplot analysis shows that this SARS-CoV-2 viruses is 96% identical at the whole genome level to a bad coronavirus. The close polygenetic relationship to RATG13 provides evidence that SARS-CoV-2 may have originated in bats. While bats may be the reservoir host for SARS-CoV-2, its intermediate host remains ambiguous. The paper written by Kang Pengxiao explores the possible intermediate host of SARS-CoV-2. This paper is also published on the journal Science. One coronavirus isolated from malign pangolin showed 100%, 98.6%, 97.8%, and 90.7% amino acid identity with SARS-CoV-2 in E, M, N, and S genes, respectively. 
In particular, the receptor binding domain within the S protein of the pangolin cove is virtually identical to that of SARS-CoV-2, with one non-critical amino acid difference. While the bat coronavirus has 19 amino acids on the spike protein that are different from SARS-CoV-2, infected pangolins showed clinical signs and histological changes, and circulating antibodies against pangolin cov reacted with the S protein of SARS-CoV-2. To sum up. The isolation of a coronavirus that is highly related to SARS-CoV-2 in pangolins suggests that pangolins have the potential to act as an intermediate host of SARS-CoV-2. The epidemic of viral diseases is caused by humans killing of wild animals and destruction of their living environments. But what can we do to prevent it, except for covering nose and mouth when coughing and washing hands? Humans should stop eating wild animals, stop disturbing and destroy their living environment. Change the perspective that human is the master of the earth. If people arbitrarily kill wild animals and destroy their environments, human will eventually lose their position in the ecosystem of earth.